Yeah, so just from a lower 48 kind of attitude, seeing tree tips coming by. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, I felt like we were freaking low. We're working on that. Flying over a boot. Full flaps. Wow, this is Alaska flying, man. It's crazy. No, we're not even there yet, dude. But this, this was a sunny graduation. We still saw our house. The goal is to fly now without seeing a house and land on a bunch of lakes. Some really uncomfortable aspects of float flying are glassy water landing. Then we lead to the step turn, the dreaded step turn. You're going to do what you love so much. Uh, step turn? Oh, uh, not step turn. Step turns! It's the worst feeling. Oh, that's gross. Oh my god, dude. Oh, that's gross. I feel like we're going to flip. It's never been comfortable for me. I don't think it's supposed to be comfortable. I haven't met anybody who finds it comfortable. Yeah, we uh, fried my brain. An unbeatable landscape, tons of lakes, rivers, and ocean access. Alaska is the place to learn and practice float flying. The flying part feels pretty natural, but a seaplane requires knowledge of a boating kind which is well outside my comfort zone. On this second flight, my instructor Martin is throwing a lot at me. Yeah, we got legit glassy water too, so. Yes, we did. That was good. So second flight, so we did glassy water, short lakes, planning and picking approaches into new lakes. Analyzing how to enter a lake and exit a lake, and sometimes the same way you came in is probably the same way you want to come out. Step turns, that's hard to get over because it's, it's like you feel like you're going to flip. It has to feel uncomfortable. There's no question, you're pulling G's, side load, which is something you just don't want to feel in an airplane, right? Uh, yeah, we kind of just went right to the end of the syllabus, I guess, actually. This is the second of a multi-part series that's gonna end up having us flying real-world missions in a beaver. We got to see uh, a lot of different water, uh, many, many different lakes, and more importantly, of different shapes with different obstacles. And that's why uh, a seaplane rating in a place like uh, Alaska is, is a lot of fun. There's a lot to cover, and this episode is gonna move fast, so let's get into it. Step taxi is used a lot to, uh, let's say, uh, cover long distances. Uh, obviously, an idle taxi to cover a three or four mile lake uh, could take a long time. Something very easy to do would be to get airborne and fly over there. Or the other good way of doing it would be doing a step taxi. All clear. You can start your, your gumps with a, probably the rudder rudders uh, coming in last. Yeah, so guys, we're going to leave where it is because left is fuller. Yep. Undercarriage, so we'll leave those later. Mixture is rich. Switches are where we want them. Eggs are on both. I'm secure, you're secure. Sounds good. We add power from idle to step, we'd be going through plow attitude. But hopefully we would transition to that as fast as possible to get on the, the taxi. And at that point, uh, we're basically getting the, the floats on top of the water to kind of a takeoff attitude, but we're bringing the throttle uh, back to remain in that attitude without accelerating. We want to make sure uh, we don't go too fast because you'll get airborne and that was not hopefully the intent of, of doing that. And if you go too slow, mm -hmm. we'll fall off the step taxi and then end up back into a plow. Before we took off and went exploring, Martin made sure I had a handle on this on his home lake. And a little bit of power and we have those canoes that's going to be a problem. So keep going there on the right side. Got it. So that's about the right speed. Well, I want to Maybe a little low on the low on the low end. You keep going. I'm slow. I feel yeah, fast. It's about well, about because as soon as we start to turn, we're going to go there. So we want to give ourselves turning room. So I'm going to be with you so we don't miss that shot. Yeah, I feel like this is pretty tight. This oh, is we're going to work it. And obviously, there's the step turn, the dreaded step turn. But uh, it's a maneuver uh, that we need to to learn how to master. There's some times where you may not may only be able to get off a lake with a step turn. Okay, you're adding power. Well, now we add power because now we're sinking in and we're purposing. Okay, and the power fixes that? Yeah. So to finish off our uh, not fun list of things that can go bad in a seaplane operation, uh, porpoising. And it basically it happens once uh, you're in a process of getting on the step. It's either like you're not completely on the step, you're coming off the step, and it's the PIO that you're, you're getting. And it's one of those things that if you can't correct before it gets uh, getting violent out of control, you just have to stop what you're doing, which is bring the power back and resettle. Yeah, I see you mean about the centrifugal force. That is not yeah. a good feeling. That is not a good feeling. Are you serious about the porpoising? Yeah. 
Oh, dude, I don't like it. Okay, we got we started too slow. See how the power fixed it? Uh, now we're gonna go right between the airplane and the boat. And we got we got loon. Okay, no problem. Make a right. Make notch a right. flaps. Notch of flaps. Oh my God, we're so close to that loon. Notch of flaps. One notch. Yeah, and then add full power. Let's take up. Oh, we're already flying. Yeah, cool. Full power. Push the nose forward. Forgot we're already on the step. I was waiting for the second rise. Yeah, when you're on a step, it happens quickly. Let's go to Horseshoe Lake, which is about, uh, yeah, hey, yeah, I've only been here a day. About that direction, right here. Okay. You're gonna do what you love so much. Uh, step turn? Oh, uh, not step turn. Step turns. I'm gonna want you to just set up after we fly over Horseshoe Lake, just do your own recon to see, okay, where we're gonna land, what is it looks good. Is it glassy? I'm expecting part of the lake to be glassy. If you have a choice, uh, that works. You don't make it harder, right? I always take the runway, uh, take the runway that's in the wind. Because we like to treat glassy water landing as not a something to be scared of, as something to be respected and not have to do more than you have to. Glassy water is basically flat water with calm wind. So the good news is it's calm wind. The bad news is the flat water turns it into a mirror. And I think we've experienced that a couple times yesterday when we looked down and saw the sky. And uh, that's the first sign of, uh, of, uh, of flat water. The best way to inspect the lake is not really just totally flying for it, just go to the right, put it on the one side or the other so yeah. we could both look out the window. Oh, it's kind of flat. Oh, it's kind of glassy. Whenever we mention the word glassy in our description of what we're seeing for the purpose of uh, long life as a seaplane pilot is uh, we're gonna treat it as glassy water. If you're highly experienced, you may have been scared with glassy water and survived. We're going to stay on this side of the lake. We're going to land along the shoreline that's just below us. And then we're going to do a, uh, a right step turn in the big area of the lake. Set up on a downwind and we'll reevaluate on final. So you can do a right downwind. But right after we land, we're going to bring the power back close to idle. Go for the flaps. And then we're going to add power to stay on the, uh, on the step. So there's several ways we can... Um uh, deal with it. One of them is, uh, do you really have to land at that lake? Obviously, that's the, the first one. Uh, second one, if you have to land, what can you do to minimize it? So it's all about a visual illusion. Uh, some of the shorelines might be pretty even with the lake, like kind of marsh, so you don't have anything vertical sticking out, So, but it's still a piece of land. Uh, so we like to, uh, if possible, hug around a shoreline. But at the end of the day, uh, it's not something with experience that you're going to beat. It's a visual illusion, and it's just a question of time. And it's definitely a hazard to all pilots. Number one is to recognize it, and it's usually pretty good, pretty easy. Just look down, and if you say, oh, it's a beautiful, it would make a beautiful picture, probably glassy water landing. And unfortunately, um, it's something that we have to deal with, because if we avoided that, then even the greatest days, we would never be able to fly. So it's perfectly safe as long as you apply the procedure. Okay, a little bit of power. Oh, we're step taxi. Yeah. yeah, a little power. Get rid of the flaps. Get rid of the flaps. Okay, power. Now you got on the porpoise. There you go. Now bring the power back just a bit. About 15, 1700 RPM power back. We're going way too fast. Oh, okay, <laughs> that's way too fast. Yeah, that felt fast. There you go. That's good. Hug the shoreline, because we need turning room. Okay, right around there. Okay, a little slow, a little bit more power, just about right there, that looks good. Okay, let's start a right hand turn. So it's like a motorcycle, you look over your shoulder where you want to turn, and then add power, and then start turning. How steep? Oh, there it goes. Keep so, adding, uh, I know. Keep adding power, we're going to sink. You see how she's starting to pump this a little bit? Yeah. Right turn, keep going, keep going to the right. That's too much, because you added power, then you got out of the turn, so now we're accelerating. Okay, yeah, there you go. Keep turning. Keep turning. Oh, it's look, the worst look, feeling. Look where you're going to end up on the, on the end of your turn, and then move your eyes. I don't feel like we're going to make it. Uh, one of the natural urges on a step turn, when things are not going your way, is a lot of times just pull the power back, and that's an urge we're going to be uh, uh, fighting. There will be several times you want to quit. But remember, whenever the aircraft comes off the step, Big it's going to go in a plow, and that's the direction it's going. Because we're doing this maneuver, obviously, with the water rudders up. So just about the time we're coming around the corner, and you're having doubt about maybe a little point sticking here, and you didn't quite really turn where you wanted to do, and the urge is to make everything stop, pull the power back at idle, uh, would be very bad, because at that point, wherever the aircraft falls off the step, that's where we're going. And what did I say about brakes? Don't we don't have brakes. So sometimes, when you're scared, adding a little power and tightening up the turn a little bit is a, is a good point. Of course you're gonna make it because we're gonna add uh, more turn. It's the worst feeling. Oh, that's gross. Oh my God, dude. Oh, that's gross, I feel like we're gonna flip. 
When do you get to judge how much it can take? We will be practicing a lot of those. Um, I think it's good when you never become comfortable because it is a, what, I, what I think is a, a, one of the high risk uh, uh, operations in a seaplane, but it's really important to know how to do them. So uh, the first uh, half a dozen step turns are going to be, uh, do we really need to be doing this? Yes, we do. And then uh, you'll start getting good at it. But um, we always want to make sure we have an idea of the wind, water conditions. Obviously, swells and uh, waves and certain things are not going to be uh, uh, our friends. A little bit of power because we're purposing. Stay on the controls with me. Yep. And we're going to take a left. Okay. We're going to go. Actually, we're going to do a figure eight. So we're going to go to where we just touched down, and we're going to go to the left over there. Okay. Just make sure no boats are around. Yeah, we're good. Okay. You're a boat now. So now I'm going to start my little. Yeah, we're going a tad fast here. So. Okay. All good. Okay. Give yourself turning room. You don't want to start that in the middle of the leg. So go pick a side. Let's go pick right. So go ahead and start turning. We start a little fast. So we're going to lose energy in a turn. Big like area traffic. Okay, now we're going to add more left rudder, more left rudder, more power. I hate the feeling. You're right about that. You're Everybody right about does. That. It is the worst. A little bit of left that one. Keep the wings level. Yeah. Okay, now you're coming out. Yeah, we'll power back. And we're going to continue to do another figure eight? Yeah, we're going to go to the right until you do one without me getting on the controls. Yeah, wow. Okay, I'm just going to believe that it won't flip, I guess, right? No. Yeah. Well, it could flip, but <laughs> we're not going to allow that well, today. What I'm saying is that, yeah. that amount of force to But me, you can see if you hit those wakes, and they're too big, but the key is to keep those tips up. Yeah. Right, right there. Even right, right there. Okay. So you're going a little fast right now. Crack the power back a little bit. And I'll add more when I start the turn. Like I'll add... Yeah. More. Or when you feel it, but yeah, there you go. This is more, okay, now we're still a little fast, but we're going to start to turn, so start to turn without the power. And then I'll need to add. Yeah, and right out a little bit. Now we're going to add power. Now you see how we decelerated? Should Keep turning. Add. Keep turning. Yeah. That means the right pressure, but getting ready to add a little bit of left rudder if it starts biting too much. There you go. I am now going to stick your purpose, so stick back a little bit. Add power. Yep. There you go. You saw the purpose is getting better. A little bit more power, a little bit more power. There you go. Now you got it right there. Okay, okay, I think I felt better on that one. How much better? On the next slingshot, we're going to come out, straighten out the airplane, add one notch of flaps, then put your hand back on the tire, and, we're gonna, and the power, and we're going to go ahead and take off. So obviously we know we kind of like to go left, and uh, we also know that if we can accelerate to try to get on a step without burning water in the direction of takeoff or on the long part of the lake, that sometimes we want to use the uh, step turn to our advantage. So we've decided that uh, the takeoff distance is nice and straight going this way, but we also know that if we start a takeoff run from this location, we might run into a problem on this end. Not basically getting off the, air, uh, the lake, we might be able to get off the lake, but maybe this is the best area and there's some trees. So uh, one of the options that we have is possibly start our takeoff here, get the aircraft on step, making a step turn, and then as we come around, accelerate, and then now we might be able to get an airborne right here versus looking a possibly getting airborne here and having to deal with some other issues. We're going to about to hit our wake here in a minute, but that's okay. More power. There you go. We're about to hit the wake. That's okay. Keep turning. And then when you point to the long end of the lake, back to neutral, reach over for the flaps nice and slowly. One notch, add full power. Takeoff is uh, hopefully you can break up the glassy water. As you notice, we had to warm up the engines and we're able to maybe go in more in the middle of the lake and start creating our own wake, going in circles while we prepare and do our checks. Biggest threat on the takeoff would be climbing, leaning over to pick up, uh, to, 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 to raise the flaps, like for instance in the PA-12 or in a beaver when you're gonna be looking down. Don't have to look at the handle, but it's kind of uh, a natural habit to look down and then suddenly drop your nose a little bit and now you're headed towards back into the water and you don't catch it because you can't judge your, dis your distance. So for a takeoff, we want to make sure we have a positive rate and probably climb high above the, uh, the, the water and maybe around the, the tree line. We like to use kind of the tree line because now we have a reference before we start going uh, heads down. But we want to make sure we don't get that second sink, the sink as the flaps come up. There you go. That was good, man. Fast learner. Well, okay. Yeah. Once, you, once you deal with the uh, comfortable, and it's okay to always be uncomfortable with that. But give me a turn to about 1 o'clock. So, uh, yeah, keep turning. About 45 degrees to the right. 
we're going to go find another lake that's less inhabited. So you're getting a sense of the, the, the speed. Yeah. It, it is supposed to be uncomfortable. Yeah. Now you can see where the wind can hurt you, but also where the wind can help you. So if you're turning from a downwind to a headwind, that's bad. But that's what you're going to be using this technique for in some cases to get a slingshot out of a small confined area. We talked about the worst case scenario, which was a uh, downwind step turn where the centrifugal force is going the same direction as the wind and obviously your sensation it'll be uh, wanting to tip over and it's a correct sensation to have because that's exactly what could happen but also we can use a step turn uh, for example if we wanted to go ahead and make a turn downwind which obviously we wouldn't do in a strong wind but now it's a little bit uh, safer because at this point we have our centrifugal force that's going into the direction of the wind and kind of countering itself that maneuver is still going to make you feel like you want to tip over but it'll be a little uh, harder to do, but it can be done. I can't see where we're going, so keep it on the step. You're sinking a little bit there, so add a little bit of power. So now we're gonna go to the right, so we're gonna get our turning room to go left and take off the other way. Does that make sense? So we're getting ourselves turning room. Now you look off your left shoulder. And we're gonna do a big teardrop. A big teardrop and take off the other way. Are you fast or are you slow? I'm about right. I'm slow if I want to start a turn. Yeah, okay, start your turn. So we start turn first and then add power, right? Because you're a little fast right there. Now start a little power. Uh, Keep started. the tips up. That's too much power. That's too much power. There he's airborne. And look where you want to come off. You want to come off to where that wind sock is. That's where you're going to end your turn. Add more power, add more power because we're about to fall off the step. There we go, there we go, add uh, power, come on. You want me to go that way? Straight ahead, there we go, add Take power. And we're taking off? Yeah. One notch. One notch. Three, yeah. Careful, you move the stick forward, full power. Our goal obviously is to maintain the aircraft on step without going too fast so we can reduce our centrical force and uh, the turn is going to be pretty much like you uh, take a high-speed turn off on a, on a highway and you wish you were actually going the speed limit or five or six miles an hour uh, slower because you'll have that tendency yeah. of like, ooh, what's gonna happen? Sometimes yeah. you can put a little bit of aileron and kind of help you yeah. on there, but obviously you want to keep uh, everything uh, parallel to the water. So now we're gonna go to a different location. I'm gonna go find a challenging lake. So let's hang a right-hand turn here and let's go see something where I'm gonna give you a, uh, a mission to land somewhere. You're gonna have to figure it out. Figure it out. The lake with the island. Yeah. So I definitely want to land going that way. Why is that? I see the wind behind the island is glassy, so that wind is coming from that direction. Okay. I'm going to check it out, though, because I see some weeds in the middle, so make sure it's not like yeah. a rock point or something. Yeah. Fungus on a rock, correct. That would be a bad deal. If I land with the island on my left and roll right past it with between those points of weeds, I think it's doable. I'll use, okay. If it was glassy, I would use that island as my like last reference point, so my touchdown would be right at the island on my way. Okay. You see the boost right there on the middle of the open area? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So give me a left turn a little bit. Now, you see that little thing where the boost is? Yeah. Can you get nice and low and land by the time the water turns on? Because it is kind of glassy, like the flight. Exactly what you're doing, except lower. Would that be the better way to getting in? Like fly in through the pass? Yes. Uh, yeah, I guess so. so you it, it would be because it is, I see some glassy and it's in and out. We want to get as low as possible before the last uh, reference is lost. And that could be the beginning of the shoreline. So once we cross the shoreline and now we're over glassy water landing, we consider no more reference. Uh, going below the tree line, loss of reference. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to set up the airplane to our step attitude. Uh, which we've mastered over the last few days, and we're going to use power, uh, a certain amount of power to be able to keep that positive angle of attack with a sink rate of 100 to 150 feet per minute. If you start very low and, as, and get to the lowest point that you can before you go glassy water, uh, then you won't have to wait a long time. So let's go around, and then you can look at the lily pads on your right when you go by. Stop. This would be the safest way to do because now you could cross the shoreline 10 with, feet with more reference. And then when you lose your reference at that point, you only have 10 feet to lose. So I want to be real nice and low coming through that. Yeah. So the, and you could follow it. So you can, in other words, you could turn on the shoreline of the other turn. Matt, there goes the seagull. Uh, All right, back to sterile. Stop. Gonna get one notch in. Yeah, that's a good idea because we're slightly on the low and you're tight. So I would go a little bit more to the left, give you a turning room. So when you turn final, you're you should be wings level by the time we go over the moose. Just above the tree line. That's awesome.
Yeah, I bring the power back a little bit. You're going way too fast for what we're about to do. Way too fast. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Bring another notch of flaps. You're high. Keep that nose just a bit tad down. I'm there going go. through 60 here. So That's okay. okay. Keep that nose coming down 60. Okay. Now pull the power back. Back, 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 back. You're going to cross that shoreline way high. There you go. You want to get nice and low. That's the whole point. Right through that pass. And we're just going to wait. We're not going to anticipate. We're not going to cheat off the side and look straight down at water where you're going to see a reflection of the airplane. We're just going to trust that we have the pop proper pitch and we have a sink rate. If you have a vertical speed, go ahead and uh, take a look at it. And we practice those enough with the airplane that we're going to be flying that we're going to be very comfortable, We'd set a known pitch, known RPM, and then do slight adjustments. And we're going to be patient after that. Final removal flaps. See how we're still in add power and we're still fine and we're still high. Okay, about right well, there. I don't know if we're still high, We're dude. still good. Look okay, add a little bit of power okay. right there. Now we lost shoreline, so yeah. pitch up and keep the power. Too much power, too much pitch. Yeah. Power, right, I'm going to fly over these bit of lily pads. Yeah, we're good. We can land on lily pads. I still want to hit them. Hey, don't worry. Go. Okay. Too much pitch up. You're, you're changing your pitch and I'm adding power because we're about to hit. Coming down and splash. Yeah. So what happened on this one is you were stretching your glide right. by increasing the pitch. Yeah, so just from a lower 48 kind of attitude, seeing treetips coming by, <laughs> yeah, oh I felt like we were freaking low. We are working on that. So, yeah. so what yeah. we're going to do is we're going to go all the way to the end. We don't need a step turn on this one, but we're definitely not going to leave any water behind us. Okay, yeah, perfect. Carriage mixture. So only water rudders to go. And now we're going to start a technique which is at, at the uh, throttle and then let us arc to our exit point. Does which that is, make sense? Which is why we're turning left. Yeah. Yeah. Torque is your friend, so that helps you uh, make the, the turn. So when you have a choice, we like to go uh, left on, uh, on seaplanes. Knowing where your torque is, use it to your advantage. But now we have to decide on the, the strength of the wind. There you go. So I get rid of the runners. Yeah. The turn is finished. Runners are gone. Stick, stick back. Here goes the power. power. One notch is in. Here we go. Here we go. All the way in. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Add power. Stick back, stick back, stick back. Work your way. Now start preventing it from turning anymore. Stick back. You see a little bit more. Okay, now relates the back pressure. And then roll afloat. She's ready to go. Make sure you keep that nose up. So let's go through the cut. Yeah, we're doing it. Now we got enough speed. And there you go. And if the engine fails, you got another leg, and look at that boost. He's got your attention right there, but you don't really care because he says the grass here is so good. So we went around to set up again to fly this approach Martin style. As you can see, it's legit glassy water, so he really wanted me to be a lot lower. And we were. There you go. Hold that point, hold that point. A little low on the pitch, right there. Add a little bit of power. Power back, power back. See how you tuck under the nose? And now when, I, when you decide to land, oh, because we're committed. It's we're committed. We, once we land, you go all the way to idle. You're narrowing on the spot every takeoff. And it's different today because uh, we have a little bit more fuel. At that time, I really felt it let go. Like I could tell it, it unglued from the water. Good word, unglued, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you're good. I think we burned your brain bike, so after this takeoff, we're going to go home. Yeah. So I hope you enjoyed that one, and I want to say special thanks to sponsors and Patreon supporters for helping create this content. It's a lot to edit. There's several more episodes coming in this series when we get to finally fly the Beaver and do some real-world missions. If you want to learn more about what Tim and Martin have cooking with Apex Aviation, check the description. I've got the information there. I'm going to take a quick break from this series to catch up on the build vlog with the Vans Aircraft RV-14 and at least one more standalone episode and then we'll get into some more float flying in Alaska, and there's probably about five more episodes coming from this series, so stay tuned for that. And until next time, keep your flight chops sharp. When tomorrow this is done and you're at the same level of comfort, which will happen, we're going places now. Yeah, sweet. This is sightseeing, this is not, uh, okay, let's, uh, tell me how you enter this lake. Yeah, when we get there and we're gonna land here, you're gonna tell me how you enter this lake, but it's, it's gonna be mission-oriented, family on board, Warwick on board, and let's go.